we're back on to Let's Have It Out. Uh, we have Dr. Reginald Lukwabe back on the line. Um, doctor, can you, can you hear us now? Thank you, thank you very much. My apologies. My Perfect. Line was very so what we're actually discussing now is about rethinking the higher education system um, to, to actually ensure that we're educating young people on issues of relevance so that they are actually able to compete in the workforce uh, and the economy. Uh, can you tell us a bit about what the higher education network is doing um, around this question? Uh, th thanks very much. Uh, the Higher Education Transformation Network is a, a network of uh, graduates and uh, scholars uh, from uh, the higher education and uh, the civil sector uh, committed to the higher education sector has been uh, organizing within, within the sector for some time. And this we've been doing through uh, public advocacy, but also through re research outputs on, on challenges relating to higher education transformation. So the, the subject, uh, the discussions uh, today are actually extremely quite uh, important in the sense that um, the National Development Plan as the, the, the key policy document of government, the NDP Vision 2030, it recognizes that education is very critical to poverty elimination and the elimination of social inequality. And actually, that uh, the aim of, of, of the higher education infrastructure in, in the country is to ensure the, the, the production of highly skilled professionals to enhance the innovative capacity of the nation, but also to improve the labor productivity of the South African uh, uh, economy by making sure that uh, the sector and the institutional uh, knowledge and uh, the institutions, including all the investments within the sector, benefit the country by improving its economic uh, competitiveness, but also the labor productivity of its of its staff. All right, thank you, thank you, uh, Dr. Lihuabe, just giving us a bit of an outline there on what uh, the Higher Education Transformation Network does. Um, although there's still a question on how they're helping graduates, we know how we're producing them. We're not looking at how we actually get them on the other side. Um, so. Prof, we were talking a bit about this education and the economy. Um, and I want to introduce this concept because it's a lot of work that um, we've started to do and started to think. And that really is in the context of decolonization. What role is Pan-Africanism actually playing in education? And while this may seem like uh, an irrelevant question, it's actually not. Um, in understanding the fact that we want to compete on a global level, but doing so on our terms as black Africans, surely there's some role that Pan-Africanism needs to play, at least in the fusing of our curriculum. No, again, I fully agree with that. And, uh, and, I, and I'm pleased to say that many of the universities are now have developed centers for Pan-Africanism and so on. Um, I, think, I think the big challenge for us is really uh, t is uh, really depends on people like you coming back into the universities, you know, with, with this passion to kind of to, to take on this big challenge of uh, reintegrating the South African curriculum with the African curriculum and so on. Uh, and I think that the big issue for us really is uh, to begin to open channels at this point in time, to open channels between our universities and universities in other parts of the continent. Mm. Uh, at the moment, you know, too many of our uh, academics are completely insulated or isolated from the rest of the continent. And, uh, and I think that we have to build these kind of flows of people, both students and academics, uh, across the continent so that uh, we can begin to get more uh, of this influence into the, uh, into, yeah. into the knowledge yeah. project, if you like. Yeah. Uh, I think you've, you've mentioned an important uh, role, actually, of young people. Uh, and it's something that I think we've seen not just over the last two years, but we're seeing moving forward, particularly with the emergence of young people moving into the professional space. Uh, and I think just as a, as a closing thought, uh, as a young person, and, and, and in fact to all the young people who are watching and who are out there, I think it's easy to become disillusioned. Uh, it's easy to see the structural crisis uh, of everything and not see the light at the end of the tunnel. We are the light at the end of yes, the tunnel. Yeah, yes. uh, and uh, like I keep saying, we're not going to wait for a seat at the table. We're going to take it or we're going to create our own table. Uh, so, so for me, that's also where this discussion actually needs to go around holding um, the powers accountable. Uh, unfortunately, we were out of a bit of time. 
Uh, I would have liked to go through to some social media uh, comments, but uh, we'll actually interact after the show. Uh, we'll give out our social media details there. So that's it for this edition of Let's Have It Out. Uh, remember to keep the conversation going on social media with the hashtag LHIO. Tomorrow night, Prof. Sipo Siepe will be in this chair. You don't want to miss that conversation. My name is Vasiya Hassan. Catch me on Twitter at AllTheFuss, F-A-S. Good night.